Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes, where today we're going to be wrapping up my reading for September. So September was my biggest reading month by one book. I read 11 books this month, whereas I think last month and in January I read 10. So big time for me. There is one book that's not included on this lovely Goodreads graphic because it's not actually on Goodreads yet, and that is because I'm currently working on the audiobook for my book Paper Forests, which is, I never know, the right behind me. And I finished reading that today, and it will be logged at some point, but not yet. Also, that audiobook project is something that I will be talking about in the future, because I think it's very important, you know, to continue telling people, making information about indie publishing more accessible. So, as always, let's start with some stats. I've been reading a lot of, like, spooky books or horror influence books this month, in anticipation for Spooky Month itself, October. So, this is also an as-usual, but my books have been more than usual, heavily, tense, mysterious, and dark, and I've been rereading some of my childhood favourites via audiobook, so we have a lot of light-hearted, adventurous, and funny in there. Okay, and then seven, or it will be eight. So eight out of the eleven books I read this month were fantasy, again because my childhood favourites are largely fantasy, Percy Jackson was in there, some other things were in there. Largely middle grade again, because my childhood favourites, young adults, still not a genre, and thriller and horror because we are anticipating Spooky Month. Then my average rating this month was a little bit lower, at 3.45 stars. There's a two-star book in there, 2.5 is three. And I was looking at it, this is one of my lowest ranked reading months in terms of popularity, but then there have been some months where I've read exclusively books I love, so it's a bit warped there. I think this is also the first month where I've had a pretty even, like a 40%, 30%, 30% split between like physical, audio, and digital, which is quite fun, because at the start of the year I made a video about the books I intend to read this year, which was an attempt to start conquering my physical TBR, and still at this point of the year I've only read, I think, three out of those ten books, but I have been reading a lot of other books that have arrived in my post. Okay, now let's get the audiobooks out of the way, but I will show them off in physical copies. So the audiobooks I read this month belong to these beautiful gold, gold things here, which are books two, three, and four of Angie Sage's Septimus Heap series. I think this is actually called Septimus Heap. Yes. So I read Flight, which is book two, and this is, I have very fond memories of this book, because I think this is the first book my nan bought for me when I was quite young. I would have been still in primary school, because I think I read the first book in my primary school library. But she read this book, she intended for me to take the entire summer holiday, you know, the entire six weeks to read it. And I read it in two afternoons spent at her house. And this is the most wrecked a spine of my book is, but I think it definitely shows the love I have for this book. And then I read Physic, which is fun, because it's like my, it was my first time travel book, in a sense. And these are the books that really made me fall in love with fantasy and reading. And this is like the first big series that I read as well, because they're quite, I say they're quite chunky books. But then like the font is kind of big. It's still like, you know, middle grade reader friendly. But then all the books are like 500 pages long, so I was like, wow, this is my first, this is my first big kid book, you know. So Flight's fun, Physics fun, and then Quest. We match, we match. Quest, I think, might be my least favourite book of the series from what I remember. It's still fun and engaging, but the quest that they actually go on, that the entire book is centred around, doesn't start until over halfway through the book. <laughs> and this one, although it's like, it feels like it should have higher stakes than the rest, reading it, it feels kind of kind of tame. It's like, yes, they get into a situation, they get out of it very easily, that kind of thing. And it's like, this should be a lot more high stakes than these two, but it's not. But they're all still fun. They have a lot of humour. They feel so distinctly British as well. I have no idea if this author is British, but the books definitely feel British in that early 2000s Harry Potter-esque fantasy kind of way. I think I gave Flight four stars because it still very much has the magic of the first book, which is called Magic. Physics still gets four stars because it's fun in different ways. Quest goes down to a 3.5 because it's still fun, but it doesn't quite have the same essence as the first three books. 
Okay, so I only read two library books this month. The first one was No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall because I've recently become obsessed with her and I'm on my quest to read everything she's ever written. And No One Can Know is my least favourite of her books i read so far. I think because I read uh, is it Alice Echoes? Alice Echoes last month, which was incredible. I loved it and it was one of my favourites. So I think inevitably the book I'd read next from her is going to fall flat in comparison. But No One Can Know feels very like the rest in a sense is very what lies in the woods it's very i've blanked on what any of her titles are but it's a case like the mystery feels obvious from the start it's got very similar plot points to her other books i also don't know the order of release of her books so maybe this one was the og but it's sort of a bit samey at this point and i still enjoyed reading it i had a really good time a fun time i just wasn't i didn't love it i liked it i didn't love it like i have for all of her other works I've read so far. Then the other library book read for the month was Our Wicked Histories by Amy Goldsmith. And I read her first book, Those We Drown. I think earlier in the year, it might have been end of last year. There's a video somewhere on this channel about it and I did not enjoy this book at all. And I thought I'll give her second book, Our Wicked Histories, a go because it feels like it's gonna be a lot more me in a sense. And it was a bit more me, but I still did not like it, and I didn't like it for the same reasons I didn't like Those We Drown. And those reasons were heavily that a very large cast of characters, there's like somewhere between six and eight people are introduced in the first two chapters. It's very overwhelming, and the characters don't have distinct enough personalities other than like a key trait. As in, in this book we have, there's the angry one, there's the nice one, there's, I think there's like the token gay friend as well. These characters don't feel developed past those key personality traits, and as there's so many of them, it's very important to me that they are. So as they all blur together, and a lot of them have very minor roles compared to the rest, to the point where I feel like they could have just been cut out entirely. And then, similar to those who drown, our wicked histories has like a horror, supernatural, spooky plotline, which is drip-fed very min minimally, in my opinion, throughout, and then isn't actually revealed in full until 95% of the way through the book. And again, similar to those who drown, the main character and another important character have like unresolved secrets that are again drip fed throughout and are revealed way too late in the plot. So for example, in those who drown, the main character and the guy she's there with, neither of their names come to me right now, they had like an argument off page, which is very important to the plot, but is not revealed until very late into the book. And in Our Wicked Histories, the main character, I think her name's Megan, and there's other characters, Lottie, someone important. Those two have an incident that happens off page before the start of the book. Meg goes to this house with the aim to resolve that argument thing. Then we don't actually find out what it is until very late in the book again. At that point, I've lost interest. I've lost interest. I think this is the book that I gave two stars. Because I did finish it, but it was a struggle. I lied, I read three Levy books this month. The third one on my graphic, but I think it's my first one overall, is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black, and I'm obsessed with it. So I've been making the effort to read Holly Black's works outside of The Cruel Prince and the Folk of the Air franchise, in a sense. So I really love her writing, but I just, I want to know more. And I read the, is it called The Darkest Part of the Wood? Is that her book? I read last year. Again, obsessed with it. Obsessed way more than, you can't actually see where they are, but they're up here. And it's like, I'm going to read everything I've ever read. And then I heard about The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, and I thought, it's a vampire book. I'm not in, usually into vampire books at all, except I did go through a very intense Vampire Diaries book phase in my early teens, which again are books that got me reading into a specific genre. And I thought, I'll pick this book up. And if I don't like it, it's not for me, but oh, I am obsessed with it. It's also because it's a very contemporary, fun, modern, quirky, almost campy take on vampires. It's still a very like, dark and serious book in places, but it's so much fun. It's the kind of fun that I can only describe as reading a fan fiction, but I mean that in the most complimentary way possible, because I've read some incredible fan fictions out there. It's the kind of book that I feel like if I wrote myself, I'd think there's no way this game published. But it did, and it's wonderful, and I need a physical copy to hold up here for like my end of year favourites video. And then, in a shock twist of events, I read four books off my physical TBR this month. The first one is Wake the Bones, which is a very recent addition to my TBR, but it's been on my physical TBR, but it's been like my regular, my Goodreads list for 
like a while now. So I thought, yeah, spooky book with hands and forest energy. I'll love this. But this one I actually didn't. I think it's a case of if I reread it again, I might enjoy it more. But I reread it in a state of like intense fatigue that I felt like I was forcing myself through the pages. And I didn't really understand what was going on with the plot. So this one has like a 2.5 star rating right now. But I am going to give it another shot in the future in like a better headspace because I should love it. If not, this is going to be a very lovely book for if I delve into like Paper Fury style flat lace on my Instagram account because it will go very nicely next to next to my beloved Paper Forests. We're going to come back to why this one looks like this. Next book I read was The Forest of a Thousand Eyes by Frances Hardinge and this is another collaboration she has with Emily Gravett which is these like illustrated kind of middle grade but still like very dark, spooky, emotional, serious, important middle grade. But this one. The first one is down here somewhere. It's, I have no memory of what it's called. It's kind of set in a light, there's a lighthouse there. There's ghosts. I read an advanced copy of it. And then I got the physical copy because I fell in love with the illustrations in my Kindle app. And I just needed to see them on the actual page. So I got this one because I knew I was going to be obsessed because I am in the past few years have become the number one Francis Harden stand. And here, illustrations, beautiful. And I love when what's mostly intended to be like a middle grade book still translates well for an adult audience. Because it's the right kind of maturity. It's also the kind of book I would have loved when I was younger and I was like, okay, I'm still a kid, but I'm ready to read in the teen section, you know. This is the ideal book for that. And also the illustrations don't make it feel like it's a kid's book in any way. They definitely like enhance the reading experience and they are beautiful. And look at this one here, look at this one. And I'm wondering if these two are going to have more collaborations in the future. I'd like at least a third because I believe in trilogies in a sense. But love this, gave this four stars, really enjoyed it. Will probably really enjoy everything this author ever releases. Next up we have my favourite read of the month, which is Graveyard Shift by M.L. Rio, and I will confess, although I do own If We Were Villains, I am yet to read it. I think it was one of the books that was on my TBR for this year. pre this one because I read the description, I thought I know I'll love this. It's also a novella, so if I don't love this I won't be forcing myself through 500 pages that I don't love, but I did, I really enjoyed it. This book is about a group of people who tend to work like night shifts or stay up overnight, who, you know, they go for a smoke break, they end up getting to know each other because insomniac vibes. But the place they go for a smoke is a graveyard. And one night they notice that there is a freshly dug grave there. And the story follows these people as they like return to their night shifts. Two of them witness someone coming back to the grave and they give updates in their little group chat of like, hey, this guy's going this way, give us the information. And it's just a fun mystery, a very spooky mystery. There's, I don't know how much I can say, it's like going to be a massive spoiler and it's such a short book, but still very fun. But also this is the kind of book where I want these characters to have a five season TV show, 20 episodes per season, that kind of thing. I'm very invested in the characters in this and I'm glad when such a short book has such strong characters because I, I want to feel like the characters are carrying the story, not the plot. And then my final physical read of the month was... The Percy Jackson one. I keep forgetting what it's called. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians Wrath of the Triple Goddess. And like, look how fun and bright colours this is. I finished reading this one last night or maybe the very early hours of this morning and I still enjoy it. I think it's fun. And I think, I can't remember what I said when I read the first book in this like new spin-off trilogy, but it's fun, but it doesn't, this one specifically doesn't quite capture the original Percy Jackson essence that we love. This book still feels like it's aimed at the original middle grade Percy Jackson audience, while I think they are intended to be more YA young adult as the characters are later teens about to go to college in this. But this book has a very, this one specifically has a very strong reliance on like toilet humour fart jokes, where it makes it feel like um, maybe Rick does not understand well, obviously he does not understand being a teenage, a current day teenager. It feels like his perspective of how to write teenage characters is still trapped in the early 2000s. And I don't mean this in like a bad way. I just think that this feels, it also doesn't, I know it's meant to be a fun spin-off series, but even the original five Percy Jackson books were still fun, but they still felt 
kind of serious in a sense. And I feel like those books are also a lot smaller. They're, they're over here somewhere. Those books were a lot smaller, but they still feel a lot more complex than this one is. This one I gave three stars because I enjoyed it, I finished it, I had a good fun time. But maybe I'm just too old for this now. I will be reading the next book because I think we are just meant to be a trilogy and then I can like close on this lovely chapter of this. Okay, so those are all the books I've read in September, but while I'm here, I want to tell you about something a little fun. So as a self-published, independently published author, I'm always interested to see where my books end up in the world. So every now and then I log onto like my library website, I type in my name and I see if anywhere actually has my books. Because they show up on the library apps so and they're available to request. But I'm always wondering like, has any library like got them yet? And one of them has. So that's what my beautiful plastic son is here. I logged onto the website the other day and I typed in my name, you know. And I haven't done this in a while on the actual website to see if there's physical copies about. And I'm not sure why, because I think this one has been there for almost a year now. I think it was put there October 2023. <laughs> so I saw this come up and it's not like my specific local library, but it's one in the county. So, you know, I cut my little rucksack, I went to the library and I spent ages trying to find where the teen section was. And this is like kind of, it's not like a, the downstairs of this library where most of the books are isn't like a serious quiet library. In the teen section there were a group of teenagers sat in front of a TV screen playing Mario Kart. So I should have just followed the standard teenagers to find the teen section. But I found this there and because of the aforementioned teens in the area I couldn't have like my little emotional moment. But I did my little videos like here, finding it on the bookshelf. And now I have what I will refer to as my most beloved special edition of this book. And as libraries and stuff are like all digital nowadays, this page will never get stamped. But like one day, one day maybe, I will... I say I want to know if this book's been checked out before, but I think obsessing over that kind of stat will kill me. Also from the author end of this, I have no idea how to check. Like, do I get paid if people take this book out? I have no idea how to check. So I distribute through Ingram Spark, and they don't tend, for at least physical copies, don't tend to list the marketplace where the book was sold. Either way, look at my beautiful son in his plastic outfit. I was like, wow, there's my face with a library sticker over it. This is the most exciting thing. And this is something that makes me like feel like I'm a real author. Like, despite publishing out of my bedroom, I'm having an impact out on the world. And I will be returning this as soon as possible, in case someone wants it. So that is all I have to say for today. That is my September reading wrap up. And that is the reason why I suddenly feel like a real author, like TM. No, trademark, trademark. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.